Hey there folks, today I'm going to go over some of the features to look for in a kayak fishing dry suit. Now investing in a quality kayak fishing dry suit uh, can be very expensive, uh, so you want to make sure you make the most of your dollars and get that right suit that's perfect for you. A suit that you'll be comfortable wearing, that you'll want to wear when you go out in those challenging cold water, cold air conditions, whether that be on lakes, rivers, offshore, inshore. It's going to protect you, keep you warm and dry, protect you from hypothermia if you go in the water, but it's also going to keep you very dry when you're in the kayak as well. Uh, typically they're going to set you back for a quality one somewhere between $600 and $1,000 plus uh, for a quality dry suit that's going to last multiple seasons. There are less expensive models out there, but they lack a lot of the features that make it very comfortable to wear these things, uh, especially on long days on the water. So today I thought I'd compare and contrast two different quality uh, dry suits that I've been wearing that have a lot of uh, varied and contrasting features. They're similarly priced right around the thousand dollar mark, but I think they're both quality dry suits, but again, very contrasting in their features. To start with, I have the Level 6 Emperor dry suit here. Now one of the things you'll notice about the different manufacturers of dry suits is they're all going to have different fabrics, different materials. And one of the things that you're going to be looking for most is breathability. Uh, if you don't have a breathable fabric, all the sweat and moisture, respiration that's going coming off your skin uh, is going to get trapped in here, you're going to get clammy, and you're going to get cold and wet underneath your dry suit, which is the opposite of what you want. This is especially true you know, for those paddle and pedal anglers. Um, you're working your body, you're working your muscles, you're generating heat and a little bit of sweat. And if you can't get that sweat and moisture moved away from your body and outside your dry suit, well then you're just gonna feel really cold anyways and it's kind of pointless to wear a dry suit. Now the level six uh, Emperor dry suit is made out of their uh, exhaust uh, material, which is a breathable material. It's a multi-layer fabric, most of these materials are. And one of the things you're gonna notice immediately about this dry suit is all these segmented sections. And you'll see a lot of reinforcement and key uh, and critical wear areas. So it has a Cordura fabric that is sewed on top of that breathable fabric that makes it very durable in the elbows, shoulders, where your PFD is gonna be wearing, and if you're paddling, it's gonna wear there. It also has it on the rear where you're gonna be sitting and down at the knees as well. So very durable, you've got that reinforcement. This is one of the things that I think is the best trait about the Level 6 Emperor dry suit is its durability. It's very tough. It's built to be abused. You can take it out and really uh, run this thing through the ringer. Um, it's really designed for whitewater kayak anglers. This dry suit is very tough. It's built for those guys climbing around the canyons and stuff like that. So it'll be able to handle all the actions and motions of fishing. Okay, so this is the Mustang Hudson Survival Dry Suit. And I've been wearing this now for a little over a month, trying it out in different conditions uh, and seeing how much I like it. And I've really come to enjoy it. It feels very durable. It's made it out of, again, a breathable material. This is their marine spec waterproof breathable material from Mustang Survival. It feels like a very durable material. It's a little bit slicker and smoother than the exhaust material from level six. And like the level six, it's reinforced in key areas, although not the same areas. So for example, uh, it is reinforced on the rear but it has no heavy reinforcement around the shoulders or elbows, in large part because uh, it's not really designed for whitewater paddling, and that's where those guys are putting a lot of wear on it when they're rubbing up against rocks and uh, paddling and bracing themselves. This is not really designed with whitewater kayak anglers in mind. This is more an all-purpose dry suit for somebody maybe in sailing uh, or in recreational paddling, uh, more like sea kayaking. Uh, rather than whitewater and for that reason it doesn't have those sort of extreme reinforcement points on the upper part of the body but like i said it's got it on the rear it also has it on the knee and what i like most of all is it actually has it on the bottom of the foot 
uh, because over the years I've been through several dry suits. I've now been through three dry suits in under four years and almost all of them developed leaks on the feet and they always the manufacturers always sort of lamented why don't you wear your booties and I always do wear my booties but gravel rock and sand gets in there and when I'm taking them on and off at the ramp uh, the dry suits it just seems like that was the common wear point with the Hudson I don't think I'm gonna have that issue because it has that same heavy reinforced material on the bottom of the foot that's really going to help protect it and it allows you to walk around on the dock or ramp and you don't have to be uh, so terrified about tearing up the socks on your dry suit. Another interesting feature of the Hudson is that it has built-in foam knee pads which you can actually remove and I was actually planning on removing them and then I suddenly realized it's very nice when I get down on my knees and I'm unlatching and latching bow lines and stern lines on my kayak uh, that I have that extra foam padding it felt really good and so I was like you know what I'm just going to leave them there it adds a little bit of insulation too and they're really difficult to notice and they don't seem to impact my ability to pedal uh, my PDL kayaks. Now one of the most challenging things about a lot of dry suits is getting in and out of them and I think the level 6 Emperor is a little bit challenging to get into because of a couple features. One uh, is it is a rear entry uh, dry suit so the zippers across the back which means you have to have a friend there to help you get in and out of it in order to zip it because trying to do this behind your back and pull it across just simply doesn't work. Um, I've tried it and I feel like I get cramps every time I do it. Since I tend to kayak fish by myself a lot, I use this tool here, which is essentially just a piece of rope with two slip knots on each end with loops. I put one loop um, around the railing on my the roof rack of my car, run this one through, and then I can then use the other one, the other loop to cinch down on that T zipper, and that allows me to just rotate my shoulders to zip it on or off, depending if I'm going on the water or coming off the water. And that actually works uh, very well and very easy. Now, if I'm away from my vehicle and say I go on shore and I need to get my dry suit off, and I have to carry this with me and find a tree or something like that, um, so you do have to take into consideration that it is a little bit more challenging to get in and out of a rear entry dry suit. Now the Hudson sets itself apart from the Level 6 Emperor in a number of ways. And that is, uh, first of all, namely, it's a front entry dry suit. And that makes it very easy to get in and out of, um, as I'll show you here. And it has this really cool built-in... Uh, suspender system inside so you can pull that up and what I found is it's very nice because it actually maintains keeps the crotch tied up against uh, here instead of bagging down and so when you're walking on the shore it's very comfortable you have full range of motion whereas with my level six I do get a little bit of sag there which limits my motion a little bit not a huge factor for me but if you're somebody who's wearing your dry suit and dragging your kayak over logs and things like that then it might be an issue for you like any good dry suit it has a relief zipper here so i can go to the bathroom while i'm out on the water without having to take off my dry suit which would be a pain and it has a very nice t zipper here which is really nice the coca tat ones uh use like a little fabric loop and a lot of guys don't tend to zip these well enough and lock them all the way in so they go in the water and they start filling with water immediately around their relief zipper, which makes it difficult for them to self-rescue. With this T-zip, I have no problem locking that thing all the way to the side, and it's uh, good and safe. It's gonna keep me dry uh, in case I went into the water. Um, and also another thing that's gonna catch your eye immediately is there is no apparent relief zipper, but because uh, of their design, they've incorporated this all into a single zipper system. So you'll see the zipper comes far down and across much further than in other dry suits. This allows me to pull, they have a little, actually a little pull assist tab here. You can grab that, pull the T-zip, and then that gives me access uh, to go to the bathroom on the water. And what I really like about this feature is two things. One is it reduces the number of zippers on the dry suit. And zippers are common points of failure. I've owned two Kokotat dry suits, like I said before, and a USIA dry suit. And I had uh, zippers derail on every single one of them, um, either on the main zipper or on the relief zipper. 
Uh, so that is uh, a problem. By reducing the number of zippers, you reduce the likelihood that's gonna happen. Another thing is, is tightening your zipper across this way is more challenging than pulling your zipper down. You can kind of grab your fabric of your dry suit and pull down and you get a really tight uh, lock of that waterproof zipper and that's going to prevent any water from getting in there in the event you go in because like i said i've seen multiple times where people have not fully locked down their relief zippers they end up in the drink and their dry suit fills with water this eliminates that issue because of the zipper design now this dry suit um, has neoprene gaskets wrapped over the top of latex gaskets. So here on the wrist, you can see the latex underneath. They put the neoprene over the top. Same thing around the neck here. So if I undo this, you can see latex underneath there. So if you have a latex allergy, then obviously this is not going to be the right dry suit for you. And latex is probably the least comfortable material around the neck and wrists. Um, for dry suits. Uh, obviously it offers the highest level of immersion protection as well because it forms a very tight seal and it uh, keeps you dry. But at the same time, you have to stretch that material quite a bit or even trim it to make it fit your wrists and your neck appropriately. And even on like really cold days when I'm out there and the air temperatures are pushing out lower 30s, that latex will contract even with my body heat and it'll tighten up a little bit and I notice periodically I kind of have to pull and stretch that. I don't know if these suits were designed with uh, kayak fishing in mind where sometimes we're gonna be out on the water six, eight hours a day in our dry suits, but I notice um, if you don't stretch them and take care of them properly, then it tends to get uh, a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit tight over the day, and I'm always having to stretch it. I cut off my blood flow to my hands. They get colder a little faster with the latex than they do with other uh, materials. Personally, I feel latex is a bit of an overkill for kayak angling because we're not doing rolls and flips and, and things like that um, that other uh, types of kayakers are doing such as sea kayakers or whitewater kayakers. Uh, but it is what it is and uh, it's a very great material in terms of keeping you dry but maybe not the most comfortable. Another thing that sets this kayak dry suit apart from the level six dry suit is that it has neoprene underneath rather than latex. And you can trim this, it's very comfortable. Obviously it's not as waterproof, but it is very, very comfortable. It doesn't cut off the blood flow. I can put my hand out on the water, grab a fish, pull it out, and I still not, I'm not getting water penetration up into here. Um, so it's very good. Uh, but it doesn't cut off all my blood flow so bad. And you, you can trim that neoprene a lot easier than you can latex. And then around the neck here, they have their closed comfort system, which is almost neoprene light, but softer. And then you just adjust that here on the neck and then put that side. And it is extremely soft and very comfortable. And I really enjoy wearing it because of this system. Other features of the level six that you'll sometimes see in other dry suits as well is a variety of pockets. This one has no zippered pockets anywhere on it, but it does have a very handy uh, pockets to keep your hands warm. These are actually fleece lined. When you have a PFD on, you can slide your hand up underneath your PFD like this if you're trolling or doing something like that, or you need to momentarily reheat your hands up and it will keep them very warm. I will often tuck a little hand warmer inside here and I can throw my hands in here underneath my PFD of that hand warmer. They are instantly warmed up and I am kept a lot more comfortable. But that is the level six Emperor. Now the Mustang Survival Hudson, unlike the Level 6 Emperor, um, does have uh, some integrated waterproof pockets, which are nice if you want to keep your fishing license or something handy right there. Um, you can do that there. They also have one right across on the thigh there. And another thing that I feel like the Mustang uh, dry suits do a better job of is they have more reflective points and they have brighter colors. Uh, visibility is a key thing for me and if you get separated from your kayak you want Coast Guard uh, or the Sheriff's Office to be able to locate you when you're bobbing out there on the water in the event that you're not able to get back in your kayak. 
because when you're in cold water survival situations, minutes actually matter, and I really want to be seen. I'm not trying to be cryptic when I'm out there um, in those situations, and I just like their vibrant colors a little bit more. Okay, well I hope this video helped you in deciding what kayak dry suit is right for you. I have another video where I go over some other uh, kayak dry suit brands. Just realize that um, some of those brands have already gone out of business. I see a lot of turnover in the dry suit industry. It's a small niche industry and very difficult to compete in. And so oftentimes you do see turnover. I've seen companies like Stolquist and Ocean Rodeo now exiting the business of dry suit making. Um, so, you know, you have to take that into consideration when buying these dry suits, but you can also take advantage of getting really good deals on closeouts on these uh, companies that are liquidating uh, the last of their stock. All right, uh, I will put links to this dry suit below and to the Emperor dry suit below. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, it's really important to me that uh, people practice good safety when they're out there kayak fishing. And there's so many great winter fishing opportunities, especially here on the West Coast. We've got our bottom fish fisheries, uh, some salmon fisheries as well in the winter time. And then inland, we've got the great trout, kokanee, and walleye fisheries during the winter time as too. And why leave that uh, kayak mothballed in the garage when you can be out there enjoying some of these beautiful winter days safely. All right, I'll see you guys next time out on the water or here in the backyard. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.